Hello, I'm Emily. Before I continue, please like and subscribe to my channel. I'm a 32-year-old marketing executive, and I'm about to share a story that changed my life forever. It all started on a day that was supposed to be the beginning of an amazing adventure. I sat in the conference room, my mind far away from the droning voices around me. The clock on the wall seemed to mock me as it ticked away precious minutes I should have been spending on the slopes with my husband and his family. Emily, what do you think about the new campaign strategy? My boss's voice snapped me back to reality. Oh, um, I fumbled with my notes trying to focus. I think it has potential, but we might want to consider. As I spoke, my phone buzzed. Glancing down, I saw a text from my husband, Jake. It was a group photo of everyone on the ski lift, their faces beaming with excitement. My heart sank. The meeting dragged on for what felt like hours. When it finally ended, I rushed back to my office, closing the door behind me. I called Jake, hoping to catch him during a break. Hey, Em, how's work? His cheerful voice answered. It's fine. How's the trip going? I tried to keep the disappointment out of my voice. It's amazing. You should see the slopes. We all wish you were here. I swallowed hard. Yeah, me too. I'm sorry I couldn't make it. Don't worry about it. We understand. There's always next year, right? After we hung up, I stared out the window at the gray city skyline. This wasn't the first family event I'd missed because of work, and I had a sinking feeling it wouldn't be the last. My assistant knocked on the door. Emily, your three o'clock is here. I sighed, straightening my blazer. Send them in. As the day wore on, I couldn't shake the feeling that something needed to change. During a rare, quiet moment, I pulled out a notebook and started making a list. Things to change. 1. Set better boundaries at work. 2. Schedule more family time. 3. Learn to say no to non-essential meetings. 4. Talk to Jake about my feelings. Just as I finished writing, my phone rang. It was Jake's mom, Susan. Emily, dear, I hope we're not interrupting anything important. I could hear laughter and chatter in the background. No, not at all. How's everyone doing? We're having a wonderful time. We just wanted to check in on you. Are you sure you can't join us for the weekend? I glanced at my calendar, packed with meetings and deadlines. I... I don't think I can. I'm sorry. Oh, well, we understand. Your work is important. Take care, dear. As I hung up, I felt a lump in my throat. Important? Was it really more important than the people I loved? I spent the rest of the day going through the motions, my mind constantly drifting to the ski slopes and the family moments I was missing. By the time I left the office, the streets were dark and nearly empty. At home, I heated up a microwave dinner and sat alone at the kitchen table. Our apartment felt too big, too quiet without Jake. I scrolled through the photos he'd sent throughout the day. Snapshots of family dinners, group selfies on the slopes, everyone laughing and having fun. That night, as I lay in bed staring at the ceiling, I made a promise to myself. Things were going to change. I couldn't keep living like this, always choosing work over the people who mattered most. It was time to find a balance, to make room for the things that truly brought joy and meaning to my life. Little did I know the universe had its own plans for shaking up my world. The changes I was about to face would test me in ways I never imagined and force me to redefine what really mattered in life. But for now, I drifted off to sleep, dreaming of snowy mountains and the warmth of family gatherings, determined to make those dreams a reality. Two weeks after the missed ski trip, I was still feeling guilty and disconnected from Jake. I decided to surprise him by leaving work early to prepare a special dinner. As I was shopping for ingredients, I bumped into Mark, Jake's best friend. Emily, I didn't expect to see you here, Mark said, looking uncomfortable. Hey, Mark, just picking up some things for dinner. How are you? I'm good, good. Uh, shouldn't you be at work? I decided to leave early today. Actually, have you seen Jake? I was hoping to surprise him. Mark's face paled. Jake? Uh, I think he mentioned something about a work meeting at that new cafe downtown. My suspicions grew. Oh? He didn't mention that to me. Well, 
You know how work is? Mark laughed nervously. Anyway, I should go. Take care, Emily. As Mark hurried away, I made a split-second decision and headed to the cafe. Through the window, I saw Jake laughing and holding hands with a younger woman. My heart sank as I realized the extent of his betrayal. Instead of confronting them, I decided to gather more evidence. Over the next few weeks, I discreetly investigated Jake's behavior. I discovered he'd been lying about working late, withdrawing money from our joint account, and making secret phone calls. I also learned that the other woman, Sarah, was a new hire at his company. I confided in my best friend, Lisa, who helped me document the evidence. I can't believe Jake would do this to you, Lisa said, her voice filled with anger. I know I feel so stupid, I replied, fighting back tears. You're not stupid, Emily. He's the one who messed up. What are you going to do? I took a deep breath. I think it's time to confront him, but I need a plan. Together, we devised a strategy to confront Jake and expose his infidelity. A few days later, I was ready. I waited for Jake to come home, my heart pounding. Hey, Em, I'm home, Jake called out cheerfully. In the living room, I replied, my voice steady. Jake walked in, his smile fading as he saw my serious expression. Is everything okay? I gestured to the stack of papers on the coffee table. Why don't you tell me, Jake? He picked up a photo of him and Sarah. His face went pale. Emily, I can explain. Save it, I cut him off. I know about Sarah. I know about the money you've been taking from our account. I know everything. Jake's excuses tumbled out. It was a mistake. It didn't mean anything. I love you, Emily. I stood up, my voice trembling with anger. If you loved me, you wouldn't have done this. I've already contacted a lawyer. I'm filing for divorce. No, please, we can work this out, Jake begged. There's nothing to work out. It's over, Jake. Word of the affair spread quickly. Jake's family was torn between loyalty to their son and disappointment in his actions. I received an outpouring of support from friends and colleagues. As the divorce proceedings began, I discovered something even more shocking. Jake had been embezzling money from his company to fund his lavish gifts for Sarah. I anonymously tipped off the company's HR department, triggering an internal investigation. The company's investigation uncovered the full extent of Jake's financial misconduct. He was fired and faced criminal charges for embezzlement. Sarah, aware of the stolen funds, was also implicated. I cooperated with the authorities, providing them with the evidence I had gathered. My testimony proved crucial in building the case against Jake and Sarah. During this challenging time, I focused on my personal growth and healing. I sought therapy to work through my trust issues and attended support groups for divorced individuals. How are you feeling today, Emily? My therapist asked during one of our sessions. Better, actually. I'm starting to feel like myself again. That's great progress. What do you think has helped the most? I thought for a moment. Realizing that his actions weren't my fault and focusing on my own goals and happiness. My career flourished as I channeled my energy into work, earning a well-deserved promotion. Months later, I sat in the courtroom as the judge delivered the verdict. Jake and Sarah were convicted of embezzlement and sentenced to prison time. As they were led away, I felt a sense of closure and vindication. After the trial, Lisa hugged me tightly. You did it, Em. It's finally over. I nodded, feeling a weight lift off my shoulders. Yeah, it is. But in a way, it's also a new beginning. One evening, as I was packing for a solo trip to the mountains, the same ski resort I had missed earlier, my phone rang. It was Lisa. Hey, Emily. I was thinking, how about I join you for part of your trip? We could hit the slopes together? I smiled, realizing I was surrounded by true friends and had reclaimed my independence and well-being. That sounds perfect, Lisa. I'd love that. As I zipped up my suitcase, I felt a sense of excitement I hadn't experienced in years. The next morning, I got into my car and started driving towards the mountains ready to create new memories and embrace a future filled with self-respect, strong friendships, and the promise of new beginnings. The road stretched out before me, winding through beautiful scenery. 
As I drove, I reflected on how far I'd come. The pain and betrayal had been devastating, but they had also led me to discover my own strength and resilience. I thought about the support group I'd started and the people I'd met, men and women who had been through similar experiences. Their stories of survival and transformation had inspired me, and I hoped that by sharing my own story, I could offer the same hope to others. The mountain peaks came into view, majestic and serene. I felt a sense of peace wash over me. This trip wasn't just about skiing or taking a vacation. It was about reclaiming the joy and adventure that I had put on hold for so long. The future was bright, full of possibilities I had yet to explore. And for the first time in a long time, I was excited to see where the journey would take me. As I pulled into the ski resort parking lot, I took a deep breath, savoring the crisp mountain air. The familiar sights and sounds brought back memories of the trip I'd missed, but this time those memories didn't sting. Instead, they reminded me of how far I'd come. I checked into my cozy cabin and unpacked, feeling a surge of excitement as I laid out my ski gear. Just as I was about to head out for a walk, there was a knock at the door. I opened it to find Lisa, grinning from ear to ear. Surprise! I couldn't wait until tomorrow, she said, giving me a big hug. We spent the evening catching up over hot cocoa, laughing and reminiscing about old times. It felt good to relax and just be myself, without the weight of secrets or betrayal hanging over me. The next morning we hit the slopes early. As we glided down the mountain, the rush of adrenaline and the beauty of the snow-covered landscape filled me with joy. I realized how much I'd missed this feeling of freedom and adventure. The rest of the trip flew by in a blur of skiing, laughter, and new friendships. On our last night, Lisa and I sat by the fire pit, roasting marshmallows and gazing at the stars. You know, Lisa said, I've been thinking about your support group. What if we expanded it? Maybe create an online platform to reach more people? I felt a spark of excitement. That's a great idea. We could offer resources, forums, maybe even online counseling sessions. We spent the next hour brainstorming ideas, our enthusiasm growing with each passing minute. And that brings us to the end of our story. As Emily reclaimed her life and even began helping others, it makes us wonder about the fine line between personal ambition and the relationships we hold dear. So here's the question I want to pose to all of you. Asterisk, asterisk, should personal success ever come at the cost of our personal relationships? Dive into the comments and share your thoughts on balancing career ambitions with maintaining strong personal connections. Don't forget to like this video if you found Emily's journey inspiring and subscribe to the channel for more stories like this. Your support helps us bring more such content that touches the heart and provokes thought. Thank you for watching, and I can't wait to see your responses. This approach directly invites your audience to engage with a deep and potentially controversial topic, encouraging interaction and reflection, while also reminding them of the value of subscribing for more content.